there, viewers, and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. We are outside in the 16 Buick Enclave. Our customer complaint is no blower motor, so probably a failed motor and or resistor, I guess if you will. Blower motor control module, power control unit, whatever you want to call them. Brought out some of these so we can just chop some wires, but no, I come out, I see it had a couple clips in it. So we got to get to the blower motor first, see what we're missing. The rear blower motor works. The controls up here look normal, so I'm assuming just something down here has gone wonky. Maybe we'll give it the old Fonzarelli. Hey, you know, give it a couple whacks there and maybe she'll start. Maybe it won't, but let's find out. <laughs> Fellas got to be kind of careful making that motion with his hands. But you know what I mean. So let's uh, get these clips down here. Get a hold of them. There's one. And then it looks like there's another one over here. There's two. These little fellas. I think that's it, isn't it? Maybe not. Oh yeah. And then take that little guy out. There she is. What's up, Mrs. O? You know those tires I sent back? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. What were they for? A customer? Yep. Awesome for today? No. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Is it going to cost us more to get them now? I don't know. Hopefully not. The price of tires. Uh, so here's the blower motor, folks, right there. So let me turn the key on. Key is on. It's on panel. Blower motor switch is currently set to the high position. Let's give her the Fonzarelli. And, hey, look at that, huh? <laughs> Piece of cake, baby. Good guess. Good guess. Shut the key off. Looks like she just had a stuck blower motor. Let's see if we can get a new one. All right, so I got our wear a tool kit for the mechanic with the on the go lifestyle. It's got the belt clip. Uh, I did locate us a blower motor and napper. Uh, not a sponsor, not our normal napper either. The other napper. They have one, but it's going to be about an hour. So we'll just make sure. I called Chevrolet, hoping they would have one in stock, and they didn't, and it's a little ways out. So we're going aftermarket. Okay, so there's the size. Hopefully, we can just pop it out with this. So I think I imagine the motor has a dead spot. Because this is a daily driver for this lady, so I wouldn't think. You know, I wouldn't think anything else. What we can do, I guess, while we're waiting, show you a little free tip here for you. So you can do this a couple ways. We've probably showed this in other videos. Let's, let's just cut this tape right here a little bit with our dull knife. I'll just open this up a little. Because we should be able to, like if we, we've got our little U-scope out here, we can throw our amp clamp around it. Assembled in China, it says. Chevrolet baby um, We can uh, throw an amp clamp around it. We should be able to see an open spot on the motor We just take and pull that tape off so it looks factory plug that back in the other thing you can do too you can stick a test light in here and Roll the roll the motor over by hand and when you get to that open spot on the commutator You'll see your test light turn off. You know what I mean? I think we've probably showed that too like on regular fan motors, but We'll use our little AES wave test kit here. I think this has yes, it does it Has an amp clamp Let me find a little adapter for it here folks Got the little adapter the little BNC adapter Get that plugged in. Let's see how many volts per division we got across the screen here. Looks like uh, two. Flick this thing on. Okay, that looks like it works. Let me change some settings here and I'll show you. So here we're graphing the current draw on the motor and Lo and behold, I don't see a huge dropout uh, as we see it pulling current across all the segments of the motor. So that's kind of uneventful for us here. Let me change my scale here. I usually do it on a lower speed because you can see it a little easier than you can, you know, with the blower on high speed here. So I'll turn that back down to usually, I'll just turn it up one click. 
Yeah, so this is kind of interesting. Well, kind of disappointing too. You know, we can, like I say, we can see, you know, each segment there. If we wanted to, you know, we could zoom in on it a little bit and see a, with a little greater detail, you know, each segment of the commentator. But typically, if there is an open, usually you'll see a big dropout where that section of the motor doesn't draw heavy current. Um, I'm still going to feel pretty confident uh, changing out the motor. You know, obviously it was, you know, stuck some sort, whether it was on a, you know, an, an open spot or physically stuck because of rust, which I wouldn't think so on a daily driver. Um, but given it the old one, two there, either restored <laughs> contacts of the brushes or what have you, but it's getting a new motor. Well, because it's getting a new motor. We'd have to dig back through the SMA archive to find a demonstration video where I've demonstrated seeing open segments on electrical motors in the past. There's probably several of them. It's not that uncommon, folks. Uh, it looks like there's three screws, uh, so there's these little gold screws, and they took a T20. I'd imagine that's probably what this is. I don't have my readers on, so I can't tell you. So I think it's a 20. Most automotive uh, stuff is a T20. And then there's a little water spout here. Drain ho hose. Not water spout. You definitely don't want water coming out of it. I can't seem to see if I can figure out how it comes unhooked. Okay, it also has a screw on the water spout. But it's not a water spout. It's a fresh air tube going from the air box to the motor. We're going to take the screw out of it like so so same kind of screw I'd show you but I gotta stick my head up under here you'll know when you're down here you will be like oh I see what he's saying and then unhook it from the motor so that's just this little pipe right here okay now that gives you access to the rear screw that holds the motor up in one of three whoa oh my goodness now we're having a look under the seat there folks I guess now you're down here with me huh it was like an omen. The people were like, we want to see, we want to see. Yelling so loud the camera fell off the seat. Get this screw out. This one's kind of tight. Against the firewall. I just didn't want to you down here because there's a lot of heavy breathing going on. i got to move the seat back. It feels like this uh, compartment is more cramped than usual. Let me see. Oh, yeah. I'm sliding the seat back. Oh, lots of room now. Now I feel we're too close for comfort. Okay, here it is. Well, she does got a little rust on her shaft. Right on the tip there. I don't know if you guys can see that. A little bit of a rusty tip. But, uh, yeah. Can't really see much of anything in there. What's up, Miss Zoe? Good boat. You ain't messing with no rope. Rope. What's up? Is the muffler part out on the shelf for... The muffler part on the shelf. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Just making sure. You betcha. So that's that, folks. You don't have to keep really track of the screws. Why? You don't want to lose them. There's only four of them. One for the fresh air tube. Three that hold the motor in. One connector. I think it's nice and dry up in here, so that's good. We live in a pretty humid environment. Um, now, if this was my own personal car... It, we probably would have just lived with the Fonzarelli fix just to see, but you know darn tootin' customer's car. I just tell the lady, hey, give it a little boom, boom, and it's working. And then she leaves, and then two days later it does it again. Well, it's just uh, just what we do. Just fix it. The time has passed. Napper brought her down. It's your classic 665, 26, 28. It's already been opened, so we already tore the corner of the box. So let's see if it's low mileage. It appears to be. Slide her out. Uni motor from Canada. So let's see if the Canadians, this is a China one. Make sure everything looks the same. Everything looks the same here. Uh, only difference being, you know, it's got a pigtail that hangs off it. Pretty common in the aftermarket industry. Get her slipped up in there. 
see what it comes with some directions here see what uh, what they say probably just in regards to the wiring harness hanging off it and they write open the glove compartment press button marked one to release back Wow I don't think we need to read these install new blower motor repeat steps five through one so on and so forth no need to open the glove box on this model but let's rock and roll let's see I think we're good coming in this direction set up in there is something like this right there it goes there it goes now it sits up in there flush get that started kind of a hectic day today Mondays are usually kind of cray cray around here so oh, I'd say I thought that would have held itself up in there but negative we'll get this one started we got two out of three we'll save the hardest one to do for last there, that one's snug that one's snug. We'll make sure our connector's the same. Connector's good. We'll get the little screwy that goes all the way in the back here. Get that started by hand. Pretty coarse screws. There's that one. And then we've got our little air tube here. That is a little snug there. Slip that up behind. Stick it on the nipple of the motor. Put it on the air box, like so. And then that also has a screw, so screw number four. Where's the hole? Baby? There it is. I think this is probably the best long-term solution for this lady. I used to drive a truck. I had an old 94, 1994 Chevrolet. Had the big 4.3 until I converted it to the big 5.7. Stick shift, two wheel drive, got that truck when uh, I graduated high school. And uh, I guess all that to say is that had a blower motor that was wonky. And all, almost every day I'd turn the blower on, wham, give it a whack. And uh, I drove it like that forever. Why? Because I was a kid and I was broke. Probably should test this thing before we stick it all back together, shouldn't we? We gotta have some you gotta have some confidence in there. They don't sponsor us, but let's hope their lower motor is good. So we gotta stick this back up where it belongs. Back there, there's a little knot. You'll see where it goes in. It's hard to explain. That clicks in there. And then you've got the little push tab dongers here. I don't even know if to the day I got rid of that Chevy, if I ever uh, if I ever fixed the blower motor or not. All I remember is once you turn it on high, you give her a click, then you turn her down to number one and you just never shut it off the whole time you drove it because going down the road and giving it a whack was pretty difficult. Um, but yeah, I remember converting that truck from a 4.3 to the big 5.7. And it had the stick shift and I remember learning a valuable lesson. So I did the whole conversion, man. I thought this thing was going to be a tire smoking machine. Uh, needless to say, it wasn't that much of a difference. It was a five-speed, had the old get rag trainee in her, and uh, it didn't work, didn't have much more power than the 4.3 did. However, if you're ever doing that at home on the old throttle bodies, the rev limiter is in the cluster, so you do have to change the cluster out of a 5.7 vehicle also, for what it's worth. Blower more is nice and quiet. Let's make sure it actually is blowing in the right direction, and it is. Ooh, we feel that. Feels nice. Turn this on. Now let's put it on fresh air. There we go. Now we got some good flow. So anyhow, I remember taking that old Chevrolet for a rip and got her all done. I was so proud of myself. I got a hammer right on it. And it, of course with a six cylinder tack in it, she tacked right out when the V8 was only at about three grand and said they're bouncing off a rev limiter. I'm like, well, this sucks. Took me a while to figure that out. I wasn't as crafty back in the day than I was a young buck. And my dad didn't want to help me because he's the one that told me not to do it to begin with. Don't mess with your daily, you know? But I did. Because the 4.3 had a blown head gasket and I figured, well, that's a fine time. 
to do the conversion and have more horsepower than I know what to do with. And with that being said, folks, I want you to go down there and leave more comments than you know what to do with in the comment section. The Insty. Find us on the Facebook. We're on Patreon and got t-shirts on the Teespring. Wherever else we are. And uh, just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.